The release cycle was short because February was a brief month. However, it didn't stop anyone from packing this release with tons of fantastic upgrades. The majority of this version's features appear in dialogues, as the release title most aptly states. You can have all kinds of new dialogues using Assist, including brand new dialogues, dialogues with additional features, and dialogues with different styles. Anything in these release notes that uses dialogues frequently. In addition to dialogues, this release includes improvements for Thread and Matter, three new integrations, and a long list of other important adjustments. Let's find out more about the new Home Assistant 2022.3. Number 8. Python 3.11 Support The support for Python 3.11 has been implemented. If you manually run Home Assistant directly in Python, only then will you find this update interesting, the Home Assistant Core Installation Method. If that is the case, you can immediately begin using Home Assistant with Python 3.11, which, in comparison to earlier versions of Python, should bring about a significant improvement in terms of performance. In addition, we are working on upgrading to Python 3.11 for our Home Assistant OS supervised and container installation techniques so that we can deliver the same kinds of performance benefits. We'll keep you posted. Number 7. Thread and Matter There is a lot going on behind the scenes, including the addition, extension, and improvement of the Thread and Matter support for Home Assistant. A lengthy blog entry on where we are currently may be found on our site and was recently published. This morning, you'll be able to access some of the features that were discussed in that blog article. The integration of Thread will now be visible on your device's and search's dashboard, which is the change that stands out the most visually. When you press the Configure button, located on the Thread card, the brand new Thread panel will become visible. You are able to view your Thread networks using the Thread panel, which also includes the controls necessary to establish an open Thread border router. The most major change is the addition of a Download Diagnostics option, which can be found in the menu with the three dots in the top right corner. As development on Thread proceeds, this will be helpful in locating, prioritizing, and fixing bugs that have been discovered. About Matter, it now allows for connections to be made to Matter bridges. So, you are now able to link devices such as your Hue Hub over Matter. But if you wish to connect your Hue Hub, we strongly suggest that you make use of the specialized Hue integration. This will provide a solution that is significantly more reliable and abundant in features. Nevertheless, gaining backing for the bridge is a significant achievement. The addition of a Matter gadget is now a more obvious choice as well. Simply navigate to the Devices and Services page in Home Assistant and add a new device there, just as you would any other Home Assistant integration or device. Oh, let's not forget that at Arturo Guerra made it possible for Matter to support colored lights, shall we? Thank you! Number 6. New Create Automation Dialogue Let's keep the conversational tone going with this release. A facelift was also given to the dialogue that appears whenever a new automation is created, courtesy of P. Taya. You may now easily search for and select a blueprint to utilize for your automation, or you can start from blank and construct your own. The appearance and sensation all around are far more contemporary, and they work considerably better with our existing design. You might have noticed that it displays author information in this dialog box now. You now have the ability to add author information to your blueprints, which will be displayed in this dialog box if you choose to create blueprints. Number 5. Sensor Displays Precision Do you have a sensor whose numerical value contains an excessive number of decimals? Would you want to have it rounded to a single number, or perhaps even without any decimals at all? Simply make the adjustment from the user interface itself. 
I want to express my gratitude to at Imant Numeri for developing. This functionality has also been expanded into integrations, which can now supply a more accurate value while simultaneously suggesting to show it with less precision by default. If you don't like the way it's set by default, you can modify it using this. While writing templates, you can also take advantage of the configured precision as the states method has been enhanced to help with that. The documentation on templates contains additional information that can be used to learn more about formatting sensor states. Number four, new dialogues for lights, switches, and siren entities. There is more information that can be shared regarding the more info dialogues included in this edition. The designs that were shown at the State of the Open House 2022 have been the focus of the work done by at Matthias de Bat and at Pitaya. The entity dialogues of the light, switch, and siren entities have all received their first major overhauls as a result of this update. The newly added dialogues are elegant and uncluttered. The new sliders and buttons operate magnificently on both the desktop and mobile platforms, respectively. By dragging the brightness slider all the way down without turning the light off, it is possible to reduce the amount of light coming from your device all the way down to its darkest setting. In the event that the object being adjusted is a light, additional controls for turning the light on and off, changing its color, temperature, and applying effects will be displayed just below the slider. You'll discover the new controls that come with the more streamlined appearance we outlined in the previous paragraph at the top right corner of the screen. Number three, cleaner entity information dialogues. In this release, there were several great enhancements made to the entity information dialogue, which is also referred to as the more info dialogue. The info, history, settings, and related tabs have been deleted, which has resulted in a considerably more streamlined appearance for the dialogue box. These tabs have been replaced in the top right corner with icons for the settings and the history of the page. The new overflow menu with the three dots gives a direct link to the device dashboard of the device that provided this entity and has the ability to pull up information linked to other entities. Number two, asking assist for the current state of things. Updated with this release, provide you the option to inquire about the conditions of things near your house. For instance, Three new sorts of question intentions have been added. Inquire about a single entity's state. What is the temperature outside? Is the entranceway secured? How much electricity does the office use? Any inquiries, including are there any lights on in the bedroom? Are all of the windows in the kitchen closed? Which or how many questions? How many of the office's lights are on? which doors are accessible. Thanks to language leaders and contributors for helping out with the translations for all of these purposes, as well as thanks to at SynesthesiaM for putting this into practice. Number one, restarting Home Assistant. The topic of restarting Home Assistant has been a topic of conversation in our community ever since we began the process of revamping the layout with our menus a little more than a year ago. Home Assistant can be shut off, restarted, reloaded, and restarted. However, it became unclear what method to use and when to use it very rapidly. We have devised a solution that is modeled after the screen that appears when you power off your computer when using Windows XP. At Matthias Debat designed a user interface and at Pitaya is currently in the process of implementing it. Hopefully this will make everything easier to understand. Isn't that nice? What is completely novel here is the very first thing that is displayed, which is labeled Rapid Reload. When you use Quick Reload, it makes calls to all of the active integrations in your system that support dynamically reloading YAML settings. This means that all integrations, regardless of whether or not they are marked individually as reloadable under the YAML tab in the developer tools, are reloaded concurrently. Moreover, at Frank has made 
quick reload available as a service, which means that it can now be automated. Last but not least, the option to restart has also been added to the three dot overflow menu that can be found in the top right corner of the settings screen. This provides yet another location that makes it easier to find. What do you think of this video? Let us know about your favorite part of the video in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more home automation videos, subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribe. I'll personally reply to your comment. See you next time and thanks for watching.